Hello and welcome to RBL. And here we have the new battle wagon. Yes, that's right, our cat got stolen, so we bought a new car. Let me explain. So on our old Honda Accord that we used for our various Ikea runs and the commuter, uh, one day some thieving so-and-so, I shall use those words, um, decided to cut off the catalytic converter whilst in a car park. Thank you very much. And it was like, do we get it changed? And no, the car was past its sell-by date. So we decided we were gonna look for something new. And this brings us to this old man edition of the Focus 1.5 diesel titanium estate. And the reason I call it the old man edition is old man red. Now, before I give you a thorough run through, if you could give us a like, a subscribe, a follow, a comment, whatever you like to do, that would be amazing, even just a thumbs up just helps grow the channel, really appreciate that. So all of that out of the way. So why a Ford Focus? Well, I've had lots of other brands uh, and had access to lots of Vauxhalls over the years. And I wanted something just a bit different. I've never actually had a Ford before, would you believe? Uh, and also the Focus has always been, you know, up there with the rest of them. And it's always had in the reviews, the edge on most others from a driver's perspective. And it's always been a little bit more focused. <laughs> See what I did there? amazing um so i thought why not it's you know relatively practical should be cheap to run uh, and we've gone for an estate again and that's because becky likes to take half the house with her when we go away uh, and it's also handy with bikes and everything else and just wanted a general load lugger and commuter so we've gone for the 1.5 turbo diesel the reason being is the choices were 1.5 diesel or one liter petrol I went for the diesel because of the torque and I'm not massively keen on the idea of the one litre petrol, which I will touch on further down the line. So my criteria for this car was very different to what I usually go for. This is very much about an economical cost-effective car to run. So I didn't want to go new, didn't want to go down the finance route. I was looking for something a bit more affordable. And yes, at the moment you are paying over the odds for used car prices because of supply chain issues. However, this wasn't too bad. It came in under 10 grand. It's a wine owner from new. Yes, it's 2015, so it's what, seven years old, but it only had 50,000 on the clock, full service history. So it's a bit of a gem. The condition is actually superb. Um, so it took a bit of finding, but there's plenty out there, which is another reason why it's quite good to go for something like Focus, because there's so much choice and you can find the right car. But also it's all about um, running costs. So this is zero, rated when it comes to road tax which is an awesome plus point i'll touch on that later but also there's nothing too fancy on it so yes it's titanium um so it's got nice you know sat nav the infotainment system actually a really good infotainment system i'm kind of blown away by the quality of the sound um considering it's just a focus uh, the sound quality is very very good but it's got all the, the connectivity you need everything there but on the outside it's things like the tires i know it sounds ridiculous but we've just gone for 16 inch alloys. Now these are 205 55s. So they're pretty affordable rubber when you need to replace it. There's nothing that's gonna cost you a lot. You know, maintenance should be pretty cost effective. Obviously, you know, that's without any issues or problems, but generally they're pretty reliable, tried and tested engines. So from that point of view, it ticked a lot of the boxes for just having a car that you're gonna rack up the mileage on and need to use it on some longer holiday journeys and everything else without breaking the bank. So obviously with any estate car, the boot size is important. And this isn't too bad. As if by magic, yeah, comedy genius. That's not bad. I couldn't sleep in here to be fair, but if you wanted to kidnap someone, not bad at all. Um, but the seats do fold down, but there is a demonstration of a grown man who should know better, able to fit in the boot. You can fold it down, it's pretty good. It's not as good as the Honda, but to be honest, the Honda, I've never come across another estate car that had a boot like the Honda, because it was such a square car. Um, but it's good, it's a decent sized boot. We fill it full, it's good. And then you've obviously got the security hatch as you saw. So for, you know, sneaking out bodies like myself, smuggling people, whatever you want to do, it's absolutely fine. Nice amount of legroom. Quite a firm seat though at the back. Um, but comfortable. I've had no complaints from passengers so far, but a decent size uh, amount of legroom 
uh, and that seat is currently in how I'd be driving it. So yeah, there's, a, there's ample space, definitely. And uh, comfortable, firm, but comfy. And then obviously the important seat to the driving position, which is really good. Um, I'll get onto it later, but it's, everything's within easy reach, nice, comfortable position. It actually was surprisingly easy to get in a good, comfortable position. Uh, didn't need much adjustment at all. So that's good, plenty of space, everything's within easy reach. And the seats again, firm, not a huge amount of side support, but it's not that kind of car. Um, but the, the seat's been really comfy on a long journey, so I've not found an issue with that whatsoever. So yeah, good, just everything's within easy reach, good visibility, no blind spots to report, uh, and big door mirrors, everything else. So yeah, can't fault it really. So importantly, what's it like to drive? Good. Now, I've always read that the Focus has always been the sort of the family hatch, but with a slightly better edge from a handling and drivability point of view. Uh, and I think that was the case, um, but I think the competition have, have caught up. Now I'm gonna do a bit of a comparison against the equivalent Astra, and the reason being is that was the last kind of family hatch that I drove that I could really peg against this. So um, I wouldn't say that the Focus feels like it's a better driver's car anymore. Now it's not quite a fair comparison because this is uh, a slightly more comfort focused setup whereas the Astra was an SRI so it had the sports alloys, lower profile tyres etc. And this of course as we know has got quite fat rubber on it. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit more soft, a little bit more wallowy, um, which you'd kind of expect. But as a cruiser, it's proving really, really comfy. It just does what it needs to do. It soaks up the bumps nicely. Those fatter tires definitely make everything a little bit smoother. Um, but obviously you then sacrifice a certain amount of handling. So obviously throwing it into corners, etc. it's not quite as precise it's a little bit more you know roll on it but but nothing dramatic now chassis wise it seems a pretty solid steady setup you know there's no it doesn't seem to get upset it's a nice stable platform um, from a general day-to-day -day driving point of view it's great when you're pressing on it's okay, but the problem is I haven't really truly pressed on in this car simply because of the nature of it. The, 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 the engine and everything else just does not lend itself to a car that wants to be or, or needs to be driven. And if you do try and press on in it, it's just not that sort of car. It's not that much fun. So what's it like just cruising along? Very comfy. Uh, you know, the, the nice chunky tires, the setup and everything, you know, it just makes for a nice smooth cruiser. The bumps and that aren't intrusive. It just glides along quite nicely. Uh, if you're not doing anything exceptional, it's a really good companion. As a daily commuter, it's really nice, very comfortable. Now, because it's gone for the titanium, obviously it's got all the, the extras on it. So you've got your, you know, your, your sat nav and your climate control, and you've got your complete infotainment system, which is great little bit of noise intrusion from the engine to diesel kind of come to expect that but yeah so for for cruising comfort absolutely fine you can get in a good uh, position as well so all the controls everything else is pretty clear uh, within easy reach you can set it up nicely so driving position everything else is is fine you do sit relatively high up so great from a vision point of view I always tend to like to be hunkered down in the car a bit more that's more from when I'm you know just pushing on so for this absolutely fine so steering good uh, it's light great for maneuvering you know car parks and everything else a um, little bit too light for a driving point of view in my mind but from an accuracy point of view not bad you know just going around the twisties here it's pretty pretty good you know where you're placing it it's not going to set the world on fire but then it's not supposed to you know uh, just the nature of the car. So yeah, it's, it's certainly not wayward. It, it's, it's, it's enough, it's good enough 
to let you have a little bit of fun if you wanted to and to know where you're placing the car. I think that just about sums it up. Now the actual handling coupled with the steering isn't bad either. Again, like I said, there's, there's a pretty stable, solid chassis uh, this car's built around, which is great. And it feels, you know, you feel confident in it. Again, it's not gonna blow you away. It's not gonna sort of set your world on fire from a driving point of view, but it's a nice, stable, level platform. So you don't ever feel like it's, um, it's gonna catch you out. You know, it's just, it does a good job. If you point it in the right direction, it goes. It changes direction quite nicely. It's just a good, solid, stable platform. Um, and I can see how, you know, if you did go for an ST or something like that, it would be an interesting car to, to, to muck around with. So yeah, you can see there's, there's definitely the underpinnings of a, a good car. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, I think it's good balance between comfort of just cruising along uh, practical driving for the majority of people that are going to drive it and then a decent stable platform so it's sure-footed and you know is easy to place it's good so the brakes obviously you can have the greatest car in the world but if it hasn't got good brakes not a lot of use to anyone and these are pretty decent interesting though and I thought this was a thing of the past um, this car has drum brakes on the back they seem fine the braking performance is fine but I just kind of thought you know drum brakes were a thing of the past or were very 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 low down the spec order and um, this is the titanium edition it's not bad specification it's the estate so it's a slightly bigger slightly heavier car I just made the assumption you'd have disc brakes with it but no so I don't know, a um, bit of a weird one. doesn't really matter, um, I don't think. I mean, from what I've felt so far, the brakes are good. So, you know, and that's it. Um, they're, they're, they're good brakes. They, uh, the pedal feels good, they're progressive. They seem to shed speed pretty well. Yep, again, they're not setting the world on fire, but they're not going to, nature of the car. So they just seem to do a pretty solid, tidy job. Now, the all-important heartbeat of the car, the engine. And let me just talk you through why we've gone for this. So, this is a 2015 1.5 turbo diesel. There's kind of two choices, which is the one litre petrol or this. Uh, now, my experience with small capacity uh, petrol engines with the turbo on, they're great until they're not. And what I mean is they, give you amazing stats until you even dare to try and put your foot down a little bit and suddenly those amazing efficiency stats go out the window. Uh, I've also heard various things on the grapevine that they are not the most reliable engine once the mile starts to pile on. If anyone's got any experience with that I'd appreciate your feedback I'm sure anyone else would so chuck it in the comments but yeah I've just I've not heard great things um, on those engines. Now this is uh, the everyday car, the commuter, the load lugger and everything else. And I just think turbo diesel, everyday drivability and the torque for lugging stuff around suits us more than the petrol. Went for this year model because now, please somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this um, because I can't get a definitive answer. But this is the... 2015-16 model then it rolled onto the 17 onwards but this one being 2015 pays zero road tax and 2000, 2016 is the same however if you go to 2017 onwards for the same engine it's then 30 pounds a year but my understanding is that as it's a zero rated car that can never change uh, the government can't come along and go, actually, we're going to now start stinging you for that. Whereas if you've got the 2017 model, because you're paying a base rate, and yes, I know 30 quid is nothing, big deal, but my understanding is that at some point they could decide that, you know what, we're actually going to uh, increase that to 130 a month. Again, I don't know that for sure. 
I can't get a conclusive answer. If anyone knows, please let me know. But I just thought, you know what, it's very nice to have a car with zero road tax. Just nice, nice squidgy feeling. So almost like having an electric car, but just better. So they were a couple of the boxes ticked for this engine choice. The other one is obviously efficiency. Um, the previous commuter wasn't particularly efficient. It was a big old Honda Accord 2 litre. It was terrible. Um, so we went for the diesel, more miles to the gallon. Now, unfortunately, as I record this, fuel is through the roof um, and diesel is horrendously expensive, but hopefully that will come down, hopefully. But even so, we're still getting like a lot more miles to the gallon. Having said that, this engine and Ford quote 70 plus miles to the gallon. I'm not convinced. Now we've done a long journey down to Cornwall and to be fair, on a very sedate cruise, cruise control on etc., um, it did get to the high 60s and we did tip briefly over into the 70s. But that was pretty brief. Since then, and since just using this for day to day and the commute, we have got nowhere near that. And we're averaging, as an example now, we're currently showing 50 miles to the gallon. That's pretty way short of um, what they're quoting. Now I know that's quite often the case, but this is way off. And doing a quick comparison to when I was driving the Astra a little while. Now that's a 1.6 turbo diesel. Um, and I would say, and I'll get to this in a minute, better performance. Um, the Astra was doing, averaging definitely high sort of 50s, if not low 60s to the gallon for a similar style of driving. So for me, and yes, I do have a slightly heavier right foot, and I'm sure someone who is much more measured in their driving could get a lot more out of this. But for me, it's not proving as efficient as I would expect, and from what the stats would say. Uh, again, anyone who's got any feedback or got their own card, I'd love to know how you're getting on with that. But yeah, 50 miles to the gallon is still decent, but it's not what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be at least mid 50s, if not high 50s, for the sort of my style of driving. Um, now this also then brings me on to the performance. I wouldn't mind if the performance blew me away, but it doesn't. Um, I find it quite a strangely frustrating engine um, and a little bit of a weird car to drive because of the engine. Now cruising along now is absolutely fine. Um, you know we're sitting at sort of 65 here, it's just ticking along, not a problem if I want to put my foot down I can, it'll pick up a bit. Okay, we're not, you know, we're in sync, it's not gonna launch off, but it's, it's not bad. But it is, in the grand scheme of things, pretty sluggish. That's probably the best way of putting it. It's, it's not a great engine um, from a performance point of view. So much so that off the line, I don't know if this is, engineered on purpose. I don't know if they keep the torque down to try and give you better miles to the gallon or whatever, but I find myself at a roundabout. I need to almost ride the clutch and give it some pretty serious revs just to get off the line and get away from, say, a roundabout or a junction. Um, you know, everybody nowadays comes around a roundabout at about 400 miles an hour like they're on rails. So sometimes, on some roundabouts, you need to put your foot down or you're going to get T-boned, basically. And uh, this car has caught me out so many times. It is so sluggish. They're getting off the line. It's just, yeah, that, that first launch, just it goes nowhere. And then it sort of builds up and goes. But it's a, a tense few moments waiting for this car to actually get a wriggle on. And I find it a little disconcerting and a bit strange, but from what I've read, I don't think it's broken. I just think it's unusual. So in summary, this car for me has ticked all the boxes of what we wanted it for. Um, obviously, everybody has their own 
brief as to what's going to suit their purpose. But if you're looking for a practical, reliable, um, relatively efficient, pretty cheap car uh, in the grand scheme of things, and you're not looking for anything with a sporty edge, you just need that practicality in everyday use. Would I recommend it? Um, and yeah, I would. Um, so far so, I would recommend it. Would I say it's the best car your money can buy? Don't know, haven't driven enough other cars. It certainly ticks a lot of boxes for me. Having said that, you know, the Astra, I felt was a very good car in its own right. And in some respects, probably has the edge um, from, I preferred the engine, the efficiency was better. But that's two quite key areas. Um, but I just wanted something different from a Vauxhall and I wanted to try a Ford. As mentioned, I haven't had a Ford before, so why not try something a bit different? Um, but yeah, it's, I'd be lying if I said this is absolutely the car you want. This is the ultimate practical all-rounder. Uh, and I don't think anyone manufacturer can say that or any owner can say that. Um, but for all the things that we needed it to do and to come in at the right price point and to just be decent, I can't really fault it from that point of view. So yeah, I, I, I think as I said early on, this car is good. That probably sums up everything. So if you want a good car, I'd definitely recommend it. So that's it, the new battle wagon. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you're in the market for a new family hatch or estate, or you're looking at a Focus, hopefully this video has proved useful to you. Let me know. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'll try and help if I can. And if you're an owner of a Focus or have been uh, over the long term and you've got any feedback, positive or negative about the car, anything to watch out for, I'd really appreciate the feedback on that as well. Uh, and so would everybody else. And with 2,000 miles under the wheels already, the car's proving solid, reliable. It's proven good. And I think that's the word to use. It's a good car. Uh, it's not going to set the world on fire, but it's just proving to be good. And I'll give you some feedback over the long term, let you know if you have any problems. But no, I think it's, it's going to prove to be a really good long-term companion. Um, please give us a like and subscribe. Pop any comments below if you can. Any feedback's welcome. Positive, of course. And uh, thumbs up even. That's fine. I'm Tim. This is Remove for Launch. Thanks for watching.